If you have a personal website like a blog or a resume site, then you're probably using Let's Encrypt as the certificate authority in order for people to be able to visit your website over a secure HTTPS connection. And I certainly hope that you are using HTTPS on your website, even if it is just a simple WordPress site or HTML plus CSS style blog. Uh, it doesn't even cost you anything to use Let's Encrypt. They act as a certificate authority for free, and they are one of the fastest growing certificate authorities with over 1 billion certificates served to over 260 million websites. But of course, as this video's title suggests, that there's a chance for this mechanism that they use to assign certificates to be hijacked and allow those certificates to be used to validate illegitimate websites, something like a malicious website that is posing to be something it's not. Uh, for example, a social media site that might require a user's uh, login credentials to log in and then they go ahead and steal that information and try to uh, use it to steal other data from the user. Now, what's really interesting about this is that Let's Encrypt actually uh, recently changed the way that they do domain validation early last year in February of 2020. So we have this blog entry on uh, letsencrypt.org explaining the multi-perspective validation and why they implemented it. Uh, so typically the domain validation process involves asking the applicant to place a particular file or a token at a controlled location for the domain, such as a particular path or a DNS entry. Uh, then the certificate authority will check that the applicant was able to do so. Uh, so basically this is an outline of how that goes. They uh, send the certificate request and then challenge issue uh, to prove control. And so you'll have something like this, the certificate showing that you are the rightful owner. And obviously this is something uh, that would be really difficult for an attacker to try and guess or spoof on their own. And so if you pass that uh, challenge validation, then the certificate is issued. They go on to mention here about a potential issue with this process is that if a network attacker um, they can hijack or redirect network traffic along the validation path. Then the attacker can trick the certificate authority into incorrectly issuing a certificate. And this is precisely uh, what this research team from Princeton demonstrated can be done with an attack on BGP. Uh, so this is an attack on the border gateway protocol, which uh, is obviously very detailed and in depth, so a bit beyond the scope of this video, but I'll leave a link to this uh, PDF in the description for you guys to check out. But anyway, uh, Let's Encrypt's solution to this is to do the multi-perspective domain validation. And they are the first certificate authority to try something like this, uh, which looks really good on paper. So uh, what it's going to do is it's going to send just the challenge validation step from multiple different cloud perspectives, as well as their own uh, Let's Encrypt data center. And again, this is just the challenge step, so it's not this full uh, back and forth like we see in the single perspective domain validation. Um, just this part is handled by the different cloud perspectives. And then they go on to say here that uh, it makes the attack uh, more difficult because the attacker must successfully compromise three different network paths at the same time. So obviously this is something that uh, your average script kitty isn't going to be doing. It requires uh, quite a bit more resources to basically uh, DDoS these different servers. But one of the problems, the potential problems, uh, is that if this validation to those cloud perspectives fail, then Let's Encrypt is going to exclude that particular server for a period of time. And it may be possible for a hacker to throttle uh, certain name servers that might be more prioritized, possibly because they have more secure settings or maybe because they have uh, newer hardware, like they're able to process uh, the challenge validations faster. But they can throttle all of those good servers until they finally get down to a server that uh, is maybe less secure, you know, maybe it's also just less secure because it's older hardware, or maybe it hasn't been uh, updated in a long time. 
And this might be a server that the hackers have already compromised or because of the uh, older configuration, they know that they can compromise it. So they're just planning to do that later. Uh, so yeah, essentially they can just do a downgrade attack to make this uh, challenge validation process use a compromised name server or one that is soon to be compromised to authenticate the domain ownership. Uh, and there are a few different ways that a hacker uh, may go about uh, trying to eliminate those name servers that are listed on slides in this Black Hat 2021 presentation, Let's Attack, Let's Encrypt. Um, so we can see down here uh, some of the different ways that this might be exploited. So, uh, so exploiting fragmentation, exploiting uh, rate limiting, and low rate burst via a buffer overflow. And then they have some statistics about uh, these kind of attacks on Let's Encrypt's domain. And by the way, these slides will be included in the description as well if you wanna check them out for yourself. But the um, loss via fragmentation, that was 1.88% of Let's Encrypt domains and 4.39% of the uh, top 1 million Alexa domains which is basically just the top websites that are queried by Amazon Alexa traffic. You know that wiretap that Amazon makes that some people ask for pancake recipes and the weather. Um, so yeah, these are websites that are getting a lot of traffic in the top 1 million Alexa domains. When using the excess, rate, uh, excess query rate exploit, 23% of Let's Encrypt's domains and almost 17% of the Alexa top domains appeared vulnerable. Now it's important to point out that this attack was not literally done on the top 1 million uh, Alexa domains and all of the websites that Let's Encrypt serve because that would be illegal to do. Uh, so this is the data coming from the different simulations that they did with uh, fraudulent certificates on their own domains and on real domains uh, with their own setup of Let's Encrypt so as to not cause outages or latency issues uh, on the real domains. Um, now in reality, this is still a really difficult type of attack to pull off. And if you're just running a simple WordPress or HTML and CSS website, it probably isn't worth it for a hacker to um, try and hijack your website because there probably isn't anything for someone to log into on your website or to enter financial information into. So if the hacker copies your website and tries to issue certificates on it to make it look legitimate, uh, there really isn't anything for them to gain by having users uh, go to their copy of your site instead of yours. I guess maybe they could try to steal uh, some ad revenue from you if you're running ads on your site, but most people just use ad blockers these days anyways. Um, but if you are running something like a forum where credential harvesting uh, could be very valuable because of course, most end users reuse the same email and password, uh, then this is something you should be aware of. Or if you're using something like an e-commerce website where people are entering their credit card details or bypassing uh, or you know, using cryptocurrency uh, to pay for things, then obviously a hacker could hijack all of that and then just change the wallets to make the funds go to them instead. So yeah, if you have one of those situations, then you may want to keep an eye on this until Let's Encrypt patches it. Uh, and there's actually a number of solutions um, that Let's Encrypt could do to try and fix this. Uh, measure, mentioned in the countermeasures here, they pretty much recommend that Let's Encrypt and other certificate authorities that may adopt this domain validation strategy should just randomize the cloud servers that are being used to perform the checks to prevent a hacker from knowing exactly which specific servers to cause the interruptions to in order to get them to start using that corrupted server. Um, of course, this just makes the attack that much more difficult to pull off, right? Not impossible because the more of these name servers you want to DDoS, the more infrastructure you'll need, uh, or the more expensive the attack will be if the attacker uh, uses one of those DDoS services that are becoming ever more prevalent. But overall, I wouldn't worry too much about this and I would expect improvements to the implementation to come soon.